This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, don't laugh, but we got ourselves a little cooler here. It's not working very well. I'm gonna show you what we got here. So, yes, this is the cooler door. This is, uh, they store the ice cream and stuff in here. Customer noticed the outdoor fan not running, so I come in and I check, and I've got three fans running. But, when you look over here, you can see some ice, ice buildup in here. So let's go up here on the roof, let's see what we got. It uh, could be multiple things. I have a feeling that maybe the drain's not draining. This is just a little ice cream stand, so. Check us out. It's all at the bottom, which makes me think that maybe it's a drain line issue, but look how that distributor tube is. It makes me think, uh, got some issues with the TXV, which I have had issues where it didn't want to feed quite right. We've had issues in the past. I don't think I did that. But the stupid thing shakes and it's just, it needs replaced, but it's not happening. Let's tear into it, see if we can uh, find out what's going on. Of course it runs on R22. So when it rains, like it's doing right now, which is not really the greatest time to work on refrigeration stuff because to get it in the lines, you can get moisture in there. But unfortunately, you gotta keep the food cold too. So you gotta balance it. So we got one fan here that's not running. And that one over there he said was not wanting to run earlier. I believe this has got some hodgepodge thermostat with a built-in defrost control in it. So there's no way to know if that's working correctly, unfortunately. Uh, the alternative is to get another one of those or get one that has a display on it. I think I replaced the TXV. Yeah, I replaced the TXV back in uh, July of 21. It held 47 ounces of uh, 22. And it acts like it's a TXV issue here, but if we don't have fans cycling on like we're supposed to and we're not getting a proper defrost, who knows what's going on. Let's see if we can find out if that motor's running super hot or what's going on. I don't know, that fan looks like it's spinning pretty pretty violent. Do we even have a fan switch or was it gonna? Yeah, there's your fan cycle switch right there. Which I'm not a big fan of these snap deals. So we'll have to bypass that and see if it makes it run. You got the blue one coming in here. And the other blue one comes in and ties onto here which hooks onto one of the fan legs. So we'd have to jump it there to see if we can make it run. And I bet you, yeah, no disconnect up here, is there? Nope, no disconnect. Well, yeah, we gotta melt that unfortunately. I don't, uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna be able to do today when you got a control here that you can't tell if it's working. I uh, don't really see any ways to put it into a defrost. It's a Danfoss control. Don't know if the sensors are accurate. This is where I prefer just to have a thermostat and a defrost clock, which might end up being what we put on this thing. Mount that defrost clock right in here. Put a regular thermostat in there and call it a day. All right, taking a closer look. Here's that drain line. They, they put a rubber roof on this thing not too long ago because they was having issues with things dripping through. So it comes across, and usually you have a problem with these um, not draining very well. That pan is pretty empty. We're gonna go ahead and try to melt this out here first. This part here is gonna be tricky because some of it's gonna fall down. May try to chisel off what I can chisel off without hitting the coil and then uh, give the owner a call back and see what he wants to do. If he wants to swip, swap out the electronic control, I don't carry that on the truck. It's, you know, we usually carry, you know, the, the basic stuff and order what we need. Otherwise you stock it all and you carry it around on your truck forever and then you never use it. 
we can cycle that. I pulled the terminal off. Let's see if that fan starts on its own. He said it was wanting to not. That seems pretty peppy to me, like it's got some good torque. I bet he was meaning that one there, and that could be very easily the fan control. Let's go kill the breaker to this thing. I don't want to blow the warm mer air. Granted, it's 48 outside here. Uh, in there, making it any uh, more humid than what we already are. All right, so it was not labeled. And so we had to flip some breakers until we finally found it. Had to label these other ones years past. So we're going to go ahead and get that one there labeled. Walk-in cooler. As you can see, none of the panel is labeled anymore. Things fall off, actually. There's some stuff there, but I didn't even notice that. This is a whole lot easier to find. All right, so we've got our fresh battery in there, and we've got the waterproof case on, and the audio is going to be different because we're not using... The nice little media mod because it's raining the things we go through to get you guys these things on camera so let's grab the little uh pump sprayer and that way we can uh melt that ice what sucks now i think about it is i just used my defrost clock that's 240 volts at the last job I just did a minute ago. So, although I've got an electronic one I can use that's good for both voltages, that kind of one more thing I'd have to mess with. I'm not a real big fan of electronic ones. We sold them a freezer right there. That's been doing a lot better than what they had. This thing here, it really could use replace that should start accumulating we should be able to see yeah see it's coming out yep it's coming out so drain is not the issue so we either got a refrigerant issue txv issue or they're not shutting the door which very probable that they're not shutting the door could be that it's never shutting off the cooler either i mean it's hard to say you guys have asked for a tour of the truck it's pretty much a crap show Got Milwaukee cases up there, refrigerant bottles here. All this crap in the middle is a freaking disaster. Hang my gauges up there. I use a toolbox, that's why I don't need 50 different little Vito bags. Some of the motors and stuff are up there. Some refrigeration controls are here, capacitors up there, filter dryers in here. My recovery stuff's inside there, and then torches and things like that, and then extension cords. I mean, defrost clocks up on top capacitors it's a freaking wreck but i work out of it and when you do 55 different things like i do it's it's hardly worth trying to make it too overly organized that usually goes underneath there but once again it's a pain behind end to try to get to stuff and this van don't have near the room that it looks like it would have all right had to run the extra hose they actually had a plug in there we can tie into directly below the water heater and of course the water heater is only maybe 20 gallons if you're lucky you have to try to go sparingly on this water we can always use the little misting thing which doesn't make a big mess but once again it takes forever for it to to effectively start melting so we unhooked the hose there kind of went through there and chiseled out some of the ice I don't think I caused that to fall where it's at, but I have a feeling possibly the sensor here may have came out of the coil because this was happening before and I moved it down to the bottom down here so that hopefully it would sense the, the uh, ice and not turn off the defrost as quickly as what it had been doing. So our problem might be right there with that, uh, with that sensor right there, that thermistor sensor. I have a feeling it's just something stupid. It's either sensor failed, came out of the coil, could have an issue there, but see what sucks is the guy didn't even notice the ice. He noticed the fan not running, which it turns freely. It's a newer motor. I'm not sure what exactly is the issue. Uh, whoever did it didn't tie any of that, tape that together. That can unplug itself. So that's never a good thing. I, I don't know. It's it's the crappiest weather to try to get this done in because you don't have enough heat out here to 
get the fan to even come on. I mean, you can block it off, but I mean, just everything's working against you today. So we're just about there. Got about everything off. I'll tell you, the little sprayer here, the mister, actually does a pretty good job. If you can't really overflow the drains because they're so small, like this one, it's barely a half inch pipe coming out. This modulates it slow enough that I wasn't running a crap load of water down below all over the floor, which there's a bunch down there, but that happened way before I got here. So it's poor insulation and stuff like that. It's the factor of that. But once we get this done, we still got to get in the middle of the coil. Uh, that's a big thing you can't forget. Once you've got ice in there, it just builds. Um, it's kind of like a savings account. You know, you got some ice in the bank here, and the next time it gets cold, it just adds a little bit more ice and a little more ice, and it just builds and builds and builds. So you've got to get rid of all this ice. It's the same thing with grocery stores or anything else. These don't get very warm. It's an off-cycle defrost. It doesn't use a heater, so there's never a complete heat uh, source going through this to really melt this ice. So on an off-cycle, it... Uh, basically just very little warmth to melt it so that's a lot of the reason why it gets so compounded and gets so bad we got it all melted out i've got that nicely stuck into the coil just above the water line we're still slowly draining out the air sensor right there is seems to be okay i'm gonna check resistance on them right now what we're doing is blasting out the condenser which we're getting some dirt out the other side yeah, so we've got some nastiness in there that needs to be cleaned out we'll get it on both sides here make sure I get this side first and since it's still a little bit of warm water left get her a little cleaner which is surprising but we'll try to work it from the back side forward we got some in the bucket not a lot some of this just was already here moved everything that would have been potentially uh, you know, the head saran wrap on it moved it out of there because it could have gotten down in there into it. It's not the prettiest thing in the world here, but it works. Well, the best thing for this is going to be the Milwaukee. Can't leave it as bad as what it is. I mean, this is, this is pretty bad. Got her all swept up. No more splash. Swept off the grates here, too. Uh, let's go check the sensors. You can see that all the water is completely drained out of here. So water is not an issue as far as being in there. A little bit dirty. I'm not worrying about that right yet. That needs wiped out yet because you see all the, the buildup. It's kind of greasy. It's stuck in place. We'll see if I can wipe that out here in a minute. But focus factor needs to be on uh, these sensors. One sensor's in the coil. The other one's there. They should be fairly close resistance. Speculation says probably about 14,000 to 12,000 ohms. We're gonna see if they're close. That'll at least tell us that whether they're junk or you know they're completely out of the, the ballpark. Like this. There we go. 9,200-ish. So 9,200-ish. For this control, I mean, look where it's at. Water and stuff, got to be getting into it. So let's see what this one ends up getting, if it's in a 9,000-ish area. Oh, there we had something. Now, there's a good chance these may not be making good contact with the board. 9,260. So the sensors are close. It's not scientific, but it's kind of logical. I bet he was noticing it kicking on and kicking off. Let's see here. Now power is off, so doing this with uninsulated pliers probably would not be a very good idea at all. So that'd probably hurt. It'd leave a mark, I would suspect. There we go. Kind of pain in the hiney. We'll twist these back together. That way we can run a wire nut right back on them. We're gonna jump them over to that terminal right there where this one comes from and uh, it should work. Okay, let's go ahead and get this top on it. I don't want any more warm air on that coil than what I need, you know, than, than what we already have. Uh, 
All right, so it's a time. Nope, looks like it's running. Well, that closest fan there is running immediately. Which, if he's maybe not describing the fan to me correctly, not real key on wet hands, clamping onto that live. This is not the smartest thing I've ever done. Because, I mean, I am freaking wet. I think I might do this with insulated pliers. <laughs> uh, normally, this wouldn't be that big of a deal, but today seems like it is. Yeah, that other fan is running. So pressure switch is doing its job. Definitely not the smartest thing in this kind of, I mean, I'm on a rubber roof, I'm not touching nothing, my shoes are insulated, but probably not the smartest thing. Go ahead and get that nutted up. I think he was probably seeing the one fan from down below, but what do you do? There's no sight glass on this to see where you're at. All you can do is go off of subcooling Let's see what our suction is. Obviously, it's 40 some degrees out here. It's probably not gonna run the fan motor. That's not too uncommon. Uh, if you notice, they're shutting the fan off furthest away from the header. Here's the header coming in. This seems to be the same kind of rule no matter what, whether it's big boy stuff or this Tinker Toy stuff. Usually they like to keep the fan running closest to where the header is, where the liquid and hot gas comes in and goes out. So. Uh, as far as what he was seeing, I don't know what the deal is with that. Let's grab the suction gauge, see where we're at. You know, I like giving JB a shout out. I like giving any of the guys that support me, any of the tool manufacturers that support me a shout out on the videos. That way you guys know what kind of tools that I think is pretty good that are supporting me because, you know, if I think they're a good tool, I'm going to tell you guys about it. Here's these R290, R600 gauges. They're small, made for the small uh, systems. The gauges are nice, big, easy to read. It's got the refrigerant scales already on there, 32, 290, and 600. Uh, this is 404, 134A, and R22. This thing's been uh, in my bag. I got a little bit of a crack right there. That's a nice, heavy-duty uh, lens around it that's been holding up really good. Um, like, you know, compared to the old Yellow Jackets, look how they get broke. I mean, that's, they've been around for years. Yellow Jackets are great, too. Both American-made companies. I always love to give a good shout-out to the the brands that helped me out. It's the reason why I always have good things to say about Testo. All their stuff there is pretty good stuff. Unlike this that uh, lost the screw out of it, which is great. And just like anything, guys, you can always get your tools at True Tech Tools. Save 8% uh, off your total order with promo survival. I'm hustling, guys. Yeah, I like making these videos, but I also like to uh, get something for my time. Nobody likes working for free. So if that's a bad thing, then uh, maybe I'm not the right guy to watch. So right here, according to R22, uh, which is our green one, I believe. Yep, all the way at the bottom of R22. We are running a 12 degree evaporator, which is a little cold, colder than what I wanted. I had problems with this TXV. I replaced it and it did not want to worked the way I wanted it to work, but that was two years ago and it's still running. I, like I said, I remember it acting a little stupid. It's the OEM TXV. It's very well insulated. It's strapped pretty heavily to the suction line there. Uh, there is another temperature sensor there. That one there looks like that might be what goes to the other uh, fan. So that could have been what was cutting out. But it's not acting up on me now, so I don't know what to tell him other than, hey, we can replace these sort of things, but this thing, the whole thing needs to replace. Yeah, yeah look at that. Fingerprints. As far as temperature control, it's cranked all the way. I'm gonna recommend we replace that. That's your defrost clocking and your temperature control both. I don't want to convert it unless he wants to. I'm gonna actually throw both of them at him, see which one he wants. Uh, to do, but obviously that'd be a little cheaper, but uh, fan was his main thing, but he had quite a bit of ice built up in there. Hold on a second, let's give him a call. We're gonna go ahead and put everything back together, got the cap on it. All right, guys, it's gonna wrap this one up. Hope you enjoyed the video. Not a whole lot to it. Basically, had a frozen up coil and we have a thermostat that seems to be wrong. We have a temperature control that does the defrost and does the uh, temperature control all together built into one. So we're just gonna replace it. 
Uh, the refrigerant circuit seems to be fairly close from what I'm seeing. The fan, which was the original issue for the guy calling, really doesn't seem like it's acting up. Uh, at this point, with this kind of weather, I, I could see why it wouldn't have been running much. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and get those things going and get that replaced and that's about it. Uh, when I come back and it's possibly not raining and everything, it probably will be easier to tell what's going on. Maybe we'll spend a little more time on it. We got, got it up and running. I mean, it was running before, but it's running better now. He'll be fine. Today's Friday, so we'll get that coming and we'll come back and get it done. Uh, if we record, we record. If not, I may have to use this for this weekend because, like I said, it's uh, April. There ain't a whole lot going on right now. A lot of maintenance stuff, a lot of things I don't really feel so you'd be interested in seeing. So this might be your video this weekend. So anyhow, guys, appreciate it. If you would, subscribe and give it a thumb. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.